Good morning, everybody. Today, we are starting a whole new series. This series is going to be a vlog series. Um, a little bit different though, we're going to be doing towing while we're doing a vlog. So it's going to be vlog towing. I'm not necessarily going to show you the toes that I'm doing in every little aspect. <clears throat> we're still going to keep the full length videos like normally do, but you might get a little bit of behind the scenes look at what we do uh, in between toes, during toes, stuff like that. So I'm ready for work. As you can see, I'm going to head to work and we're going to start this vlog. Keep in mind, this is gonna be kind of a trial run. I am doing this whole vlog on my phone, my iPhone X, um, and in the mail on Monday, we will be receiving the Canon T7i Creator Series. So the quality of these vlogs should be much better then. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So let's see how this goes, and uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think about it. Hopefully you guys like it. So let's see what's happening. Uh, we got Roberto here in his truck looking like he's going to add some air to his tires. Roberto, what are you doing? So we ordered a 5 8 cable with half inch chain, but they sent us 5 8 chain and 5 8 hook. So then we asked for a half inch chain. They sent us a half inch chain, but not a half inch hook. So we're going to try to put half inch onto here, eliminate this, and then we'll wait for a hook to come in. But I need to find out if this half inch will fit onto this hammer lock. This cable is for the white landall. So let's see what we can do. Punch, should just be able to pound this thing right out. There is an arrow right here. I'll show you the arrow. Oh, it's, well, there it is. So apparently that arrow is the way you assemble it. So I'm assuming that if we pound it out this direction, it should come on out. If not, we'll flip it around and try it again. All right, hammer, pin. There it goes, it's going down. Oops, it's going though. Let's see if we can grab the pin, not yet. There it goes. Oh, Jesus. Alright, so we got the pin, got the collar, and it's separated. Cool. So now we'll take this guy out. Um, looks like we gotta loosen it a bit. Oh, geez. Take that out. All right, hopefully our half inch chain fits. We have a three foot section of half inch chain. Let's see if it'll fit here. Oh, it won't. Okay, that means that we're gonna have to get them to send us a half inch hammer lock because that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna call them. So we just got off the phone with the manufacturer and they are gonna be sending us uh, they're gonna be sending us a half inch hammer lock. This is a 5 8 hammer lock. Uh, and then they're gonna be sending us a half, inch, a half inch hook. This is a 5 8 hook. They're actually gonna let us keep this 5 8. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this 5 8 chain on the rotator because it's a really big chain. It's rated at like 22,000 uh, pounds working load limit, which is good for the rotator, but not really applicable for the land on. That's a lot of chain. This probably weighs 15, 20 pounds, just this two foot section. So it's a pretty big chain. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and throw this on the rotator and kind of put everything away. We're gonna have to wait a few days for the manufacturer to send us the proper parts and then we'll get the cable put on. We might put the cable on uh, now just because it does have this eyelet here. It does have this eyelet that is we could still use. We could put a shackle through that uh, or just run a chain through the eyelet itself. So we'll see, we, if we have time today, we might just throw the cable on. Um, it's a little bit of a project, but it's not too bad. 75 foot of uh, five eighths cable. So let's go ahead and put this chain on the rotator. All right, we are here at the rotator. Let's go ahead and get to the chain carousel here. Uh, so chain carousel, first door, and here. All right, here's the rotator's chain carousel. Everything's labeled in this, uh, 
in this unit we took a label maker to everything basically so um, we'll probably just find an empty spot right now fit this one in and then we'll label it later um, currently we have a spot here with a uh, chain bridle or a cable bridle and then two really short half inch chains three foot long so what I'm thinking is we'll add the uh, five eights up here into this uh, bay just because it has room so we'll take our 5 8 chain you guys can't see this but i'm just going to hang it up here on the carousel and then it's just going to kind of hang down here and hang out there so there's our 5 8 chain giant hook compared to the half inch this is half inch here and that's 5 8 it is amazingly bigger um, so that is all put away here's an air hose and the rotator if you guys are wondering like i said everything's labeled and we'll bring out a uh, full in-depth tour of this truck okay excuse the mess in the car but uh, i have this flashlight here it i had to take it home put it on charge i also have my guardian angel here um, guardian angel that was put on charge as well so these both belong um, in the rotator. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in the rotator. We also have the foam cannon. Uh, so I'm gonna fill that up and get it ready because the 12 ton is on its way back here and it is filthy. It was at the festivals for the past month. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, give it a proper wash. Okay, so this light here, this one light, which is actually really bright. You probably can't tell on camera. Well, maybe you can. Uh, it's super bright. And Roberto bought this for me and Darl, very nice guy. Uh, bought this for us at Harbor Freight, believe it or not. Uh, it was on sale. It's I looked it up. It's like forty dollar light usually, and he got it for like ten, fifteen bucks or something like that. So all the trucks have them. This one is mine personally. Darl's got his in that truck. Um, this light it lives right here. That's a good spot for it, in my opinion. It lays flat. Um, the Guardian Angel light lives on my hard hat, so that's for that lives and the hard hat itself lives up uh, behind the seats as well as my GoPro case with all the camera gear. So uh, we'll go ahead and throw that up there and yeah. Okay so GoPro case lives back here like I said. Um, just set it back there and then hard hat as well lives back there. Uh, we have a job coming up on Monday, we're gonna lift that container up again. If you guys haven't seen that video, link in the description and here. But it is basically us lifting a um, container, a 40 foot container with a car inside of it, like a million dollar race car. And a lot of people say it's not a million dollar race car. I don't really know the exact price of it, but the owner of the car did say that it is in the millions. So for everyone saying that it's not a million dollar car, it, it I mean, it's a BMW and that itself doesn't cost a million dollars. But all the parts that he put onto it, roll cage and the engine aftermarket, um, all the camera gear, I mean, it's insane. It's a full-on race car. So um, let's not argue about the price, but it's it's a pretty high-value deal. Um, if, if the car itself isn't at a million dollars, the container and the contents are well above a million dollars. Um, so we have to lift that uh, container, 40-foot container, up again with the rotator and then the uh, trucking company is going to back under it and we're gonna send them on their way and then we possibly have another job after that lifting up some uh, pieces of steel that are on site uh, we have to look at it make sure it's something that we can do obviously with the rotator we're kind of limited on uh, boom uh, extension so we'll take a look um, now what we're gonna do is lift up or not lift up start the rotator um, it Last time it was run was yesterday, which isn't a big deal, um, but we like to just keep the trucks ready in case we have to roll out on a CHP. We're not sitting here, especially in this rotator. It takes like five minutes to fully air up. So we'll go ahead and get it uh, started up, we'll chill out in the AC for a few minutes, make sure everything's good. Uh, might even fill it up with some fuel. Yeah, we'll fill it up with fuel. We got half a tank. We'll fill it up with fuel, fill it up with def, uh, make sure it's all ready to go. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you here in a second when we do that. Okay. Let's well, pull this thing out of the bay here and get some fuel in it. We here at Plaza Towing 
have a thousand gallon on-site diesel tank, which is super convenient. It is awesome. Um, we actually need a bigger one, to be honest with you. But, um, so, pull up to the fuel island here. This uh, rotator has only got one side, which is not, I guess it's, it's nice for fueling up, because you don't have to worry about fueling up the other side. But it does run out quicker, but this truck doesn't run up and down the road out of town, so. I think this is like the second time we filled it up. So anyway, let's get some fuel in this thing and park it. Let's see, okay. So let's reset this deal to zero because we log all of our fuel consumption. And undo the cap. Never ever get the fuel on the chrome. And we start a pumping. And now we wait. Um, we might be able to get the death hose over here. I should have thought about that a little better, but it's all right. Let's see if we can, ah, you can see me. All right. Let's see if it'll reach. Oh yeah, we're good. This stuff is nasty. If you get this on any surface of your vehicle, it'll look like that. Eek. So, be nice and careful here. Do that. Turn it on. That's on. And we'll do the do. Pump a do. Hold the pumper. Yeah. Let it do its thing. Double pumping. We got def. Got diesel, glorious diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. Let that do its thing. At the, what is this tank? This is a 135 gallon tank. So we'll let it do its 135 gallons, probably half of that. We'll let the def do its thing. I think it's like a 10 gallon. Yeah, see, it's pretty quick. And then I, know, I usually give it a I usually give it a quick little pump. You don't want to overflow it because it will make a mess. Nice and careful. I'll we'll actually set this down for a second. I'm gonna coil this hose nice and neat. I'll tell you what, tires make a really good phone stand. Anyways, we can coil this hose up nice and neat. So whoever uses it next is nice and pretty. make sure you put your cap back on. I do not know that from experience. Neat little thing in the rotator that's actually required to uh, permit this truck is to have a digital scale in California. Um, let me flip the camera around. This deal here is telling me that, and it's actually not completely accurate yet um, because we have to recalibrate it again. Something got messed up in the settings. Uh, but you get the general idea. Steer, there's no um, sensor on the steer because it's not near right front end. But once this thing tells me, so lift 14,240 pounds, drive 36,280 pounds. If you add that together, that's the total weight on the three rear tires. Now this isn't completely accurate, like I said, because uh, one, brakes are set, we're not completely on level ground and the truck's not running, so it could be slightly low on air pressure. Um, but you get the general idea. It's kind of cool to see this go up and down as uh, you go down the road or Comparing this number to when you actually put a load on the back Then it gets really heavy and you can get a rough idea of how heavy you are Typically uh, when you have something on the hook, you're above a hundred thousand pounds uh, At least with this truck because this truck weighs like 65,000 pounds um, Without a load on the back We got the rotator backed into the bay what we're gonna do is we have some, uh, what are they like, two by twos, I think? They're pieces of wood. We're gonna cut them down to a couple different variations of lengths, but we are gonna cut them down for some good lumber here in the truck just to have for like uh, when you have to pre-pick trucks, set them down on some blocks. Not super heavy lumber, but um, not like plywood or anything like that. It's, uh, it's just, 
I don't know what it is, but we're gonna cut it down, see what we gotta do with it, and uh, yeah. So that's why it's kind of painted white, and it's just sitting here. Uh, but I figure we can use it and uh, cut it down to the length that we need it. So let's just go ahead and take one of these. I think they're like eight feet long. We'll take one, take it to the uh, to the saw, give it a cut. So I think these are. Whoops. Uh. We're just gonna drag this down to the shop and get a get a uh, skill saw, give it a cut. I'm thinking we'll do like one and a half feet. We'll do like maybe four of those and then we'll see what else we need. I think that'll be a good start though. This isn't really lumber for like cribbing or anything so it's not, I'm not too worried about it. We have really big heavy like railroad ties for stuff like that. So, oh, Roberto, I want to cut this wood down into like sections. So for the rotator, actually for all the trucks really, so we can like set trucks down on it, you know, when we yeah, have to pre-pick them. Have already broke, Are yeah. they? Yeah, I know. They, they get used quite a bit. So I'm thinking what, like one and a half feet? Yeah. One and a half. It is? Where? Yeah. Oh. But maybe this part from here on. Be yeah, we could use that side. We'll use this side. So that looks good. So I'm thinking like a couple, one and a half. We got tape measures for that, buddy. What size shoe are you? Six, twelve. Oh. Oh. All right, guys. So we have it all measured out here. We're ready to cut. So let's get started. Just kidding. All right. Every one and a half feet. We got the Milwaukee vacuum box here. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is, as you can see, there is some like gravel in here. I don't really know where that came from. Probably on the last accident, some, I don't know. Anyway, we'll clean it out here. This is where that newly cut wood is gonna end up. So we got this nice Milwaukee battery powered vacuum now. And it is perfect for little jobs like this. For All right. We got this freshly cut lumber that we just made up. Let's see where the best spot for it is gonna be. I'm thinking back here by the remote, where we can kind of keep it. Somewhere right around here. Right, it is now lunchtime, so I think we're gonna go to your pie, me and Bill. Bill, we going to your pie? Doesn't ask us to come by and cut us long, so. All right, guys, so we just finished out the day by giving Noah's rims here a polish job. Um, just quick polish job, and uh, he's gonna be on his way. It is mail time. We are home now, off of work for now. We're still on call, obviously. But uh, we are home and we got a package from Lemur Light. This guy, Lemur Light, if you haven't seen the uh, video of this, I use it all the time. Um, but basically, long story short, it's got a light here, really bright. And then it's also got a light here, 
really bright. This is all battery powered and it is awesome. Lemur Light is a uh, new and innovating company. They just sent me this light like right when it came out. Awesome, thank you so much for that. Still use it every day. As you can see, it's got some battle scars, but it's still going strong. Um, but the cool thing about the owner of Lemur Light, uh, he actually talks to me every once in a while and notifies me of new uh, innovations within their product. And when they do come out with new things, they send it to me. So that's what's in this package here. I'm gonna rip it open. Okay, so Lemur Light, awesome guy. Stay safe, thank you very much. Now, let's see what we got in here. We have one charger, new charger actually, totally different charger. We have a cigarette plug that uh, he recommends changing out because the old one had a few issues. So we'll go ahead and throw this new plug in. Slow down, move over sticker. And this is their newest product. It is a tray. Uh, it's a piece of plastic here that is form fitted to fit inside of this box and hold the battery in place so it's not uh, standing in there freely. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these contents a little bit closer and see what we got from Lemur Light. Ah, something handy I just noticed. Mr. Lemurlite here keeps a fuse taped under here for extra keeping. So when you're out in the field and you blow a fuse, haven't done it yet, but if you do happen to do it, you will be good to go. You have a fuse here. We got it. All right, so that is the old switch. Let's compare to the new switch. I don't think it's different, to be honest. I think what Kyle was telling me is that they were just having issues with this generation of switch, so they went with uh, this other switch. Um, it actually is a little bit different. They're both walking switches. They're both 12, it's, it's a 12 volt cigarette lighter. So this uh, deal goes and takes this end of the charger and that's how you charge it. So we'll go ahead and unscrew you and put it back in. Boom, all right, make sure it's accessible and we will not cross thread it. Ah, it does tell you. Make sure. Obviously, if you buy a light right now, it's gonna come with this stuff, so you won't have to deal with this. But in my case, I need to make sure that I plug positive and negative, because I will probably have a fire on my hands. Okie dokies. So, we have the plate installed like this. There's uh, six screws, and they're already pre-drilled, surprising enough, so they obviously maybe even thought about this in the future, or um, just integrated what they already had. Smart design. So you got six screws here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, cinch those down and install the battery. Like that. So that battery is not gonna be flopping all over the place. That's awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and wire the battery up and we'll see. finished product with the uh, new printed insert installed. You got the six screws, super easy install. This battery is locked down in place and check out this geometry. It's pretty satisfying. Boom. And the lemur light, light working, beacon working. 
So now with the new charger, we are gonna plug it in and look for, well that's finished. We are going to look for a solid green, which is monitored, monitoring charge, actually, I take that back. We are gonna be looking for a solid red battery charger. So let's plug it in and see if we get solid red. All right guys, the lemur light is plugged in. We have a solid red on the charger. Nothing is on fire yet. And yeah, so it looks like we got a good solid install. And yeah, so we'll let this thing fully charge and we'll put it back in the truck and wait to use it on the next run, so. All right guys, well hopefully you enjoyed this vlog. First vlog, uh, I'm gonna be honest, it was kind of rough, kind of uh, hard to get in the groove of it because I've never done it before, so. Hopefully things will get better. I think you guys will enjoy it nonetheless. Just uh, stick with me on it. Let me get better at it. Editing, stuff like that. It's a whole different style. So let me get better at it. And uh, if you guys like it, please let me know in the comments below. Give me some feedback. Let me know if you don't like it, if you like it, what I can do better. And yeah, just uh, be conscious that that new Canon T7i will be coming in the mail on Monday. Today is Saturday. Uh, and I am going to the Vegas show, so we will be vlogging that as well. So, with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.